Hey everybody, I'm Philip. And I'm Justin. And together we are pajamas. And I thought we would do a fun little activity, something different. I've been on a binge lately of watching videos on YouTube of like couples asking each other questions, like the card games and stuff. And while we don't have that, I thought it'd be fun to just do something like that. So we're going to play 20 questions. And it's just a random one I picked uh, up online. So we're going to go through it. I've only seen the first one or two just to see, make sure they would be okay. And so I figured what we'll do is I'll ask question number one to you. You'll answer and then I'll answer. Then you ask number two, I'll answer, you answer, and we'll just go back and forth. I'll end. And we are trying a different setup, so if the video or sound is a little wonky, it is a work in progress. All right, play 20 questions with your partner. It's all purple. That's also why I picked it. From the Couples Institute. All right, question number one. If you could change only one thing in your life, what would that be and why? Well, it would be that you wouldn't be in so much pain because then we could have even more experiences that we would both like to have. Yeah, that's true. And we would both be much happier. Yeah, that's definitely true, yeah. I'm not sure if it would count, though, because it says what I would change in my life, but you are a part of my life. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, yes, it would definitely be that you would no longer be in pain. Definitely. Sure. Thank you. That's also what I would change. <laughs> if I could change anything, I would love to wake up tomorrow and be completely healed. I've lost going on 12 years to this, and there's no end in sight. So, yeah. I've learned to make do with what I have and appreciate what I have, but, yeah. As you know from being with me for so long that it's a struggle every day. All right, question number two, you ask me. In a regular day, what do you find yourself thinking about the most? Hmm. All these questions are going to be about my condition. That's going to be like the most boring <laughs> video. Uh, I think about my back and neck the most because I have to be hyper aware and ultra careful in everything I do. At all times, I, I, I can't sneeze. I can't cough. It's just living in a constant stasis of potential setback and fear. Non-pain related though. So we're not always talking about my stupid condition. Though you can... You'll see how it just, it predominates everything and it, it's awful. I don't like one particular, like I think about, you know, I multitask mm -hmm. and I juggle things in my head. So I think about a lot of things at once, like what's going to be for supper or how are you doing if you're not here? What do I need to do as far as editing and work? Uh, do I have any time for downtime? What are we going to do this weekend? Do we have any chores that need done? I just, I, I just, my brain just is always going all the time. So I don't think about one thing. The one thing, the one constant thing is this, so. Uh, what about you? Work. Oh, okay. Mine is also probably not going to be a very interesting answer, because on a regular day, or at night in our case, it's my mind is very preoccupied with work. Whenever I'm not here, I'm usually at work. Right, yeah, that makes sense. And when I'm there, I need to be aware of what's going on, especially the time. I need to think of how much time I'll need to do this and that, and arrange my night accordingly. Right. Revolving right. around everything that I need to do. Mm -hmm. Also, if you can hear cars in the background, we are using the blue snowball for the first time in a minute. And it picks up everything. And we live across the street from a gas station. So, Question number three. If you could write a song about your life, what type of music would you use? Oh, it would definitely be the... It would definitely be in the classical sort of genre. Yeah. But whether a major scale or a minor scale, I love the sound of the minor scales much more. So it would definitely be the dominant one that would be played. I guess the snarky answer is the blues. <laughs> so, okay. I hurt my back. And it kind of sucks. Just... I coughed today na, 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 and popped a rib. <laughs> and mine would, it would change in whether it would, it would be rapid or slow. So there would be some rising and falling and rising and falling. Right, yeah. What things in your life bring you the greatest pleasure? Uh, two things. Uh, 
being with you and creating. I love to create. I love to be creative. And I've had various aspects of it taken from me. All roads lead back to this. Um, but I found something that I think I can do. And I've just jumped in the deep end doing it. And I enjoy it. So, Similarly, what gives me much pleasure is being with you, being with the family. Mm -hmm. And also, one thing that I am passionate about is obtaining knowledge. Yes. I really like to read and mm -hmm. absorb everything. I, Whenever I read, I don't simply speed read and skim through everything like many people read. I like to ingest it. Right. One thing that really drives me is wanting to know as many things as possible. Because right. I want to know everything. Yeah, that makes sense. Number five. What do you feel is your greatest accomplishment in your life? Did other people help to make that happen? That very much, yes. I actually wouldn't have been able to accomplish it without other people, now that I think about it, because the greatest accomplish accomplishment was that, and still is, that I am here or whenever people need me in the hours of need. Mm -hmm. I've been by my mother's side for a long time. Mm -hmm. I've also helped raise my brother and sister. And I also found you, and we both helped each other in our hours of need. Yeah, that's true. So I would say that my greatest accomplishment is that I could say it would be, I am a shoulder for people to cry on, or I am someone that people can talk to and confide in because I don't talk about... Yeah, you're not gossipy. Yes, I don't... Yeah, just nice. But I don't spread... Things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've learned the hard way. People, people, when people say to you, oh, you can talk to me, you can tell me anything. No, you can't. <laughs> They'll be the first people to go and, and start a mess behind your back. Again, this is going to be an all roads lead back to my injury. My greatest accomplishment in my life, um, I guess twofold. One is, well, it's a fewfold. One is surviving the car accident. When all by all accounts, I shouldn't have. Um, the second one is... I haven't recovered, but my uh, strength of will to endure and make some kind of life with what I have left. And my determination to still create and still try and feel like I matter, that I'm doing something productive. Like, I don't want to be seen as the person that just is uh, a freeloader or using someone or trying to get attention or that crap. I could think of better ways to get attention. <laughs> and uh, no accomplishment is meeting you. Because you have the patience of a saint. And like someone who's in a chronic health condition, that's all you can ask for, really. It's just love and patience for people. Because you can't help what you're going through. And you can't help that you feel the way you do or you have your grumpy, painful, bad days. And you want somebody to stick uh, by you through it, no matter what. And you do that. Good friends are hard to come by, and good partners are even harder to come by. Yeah, very true, very true. In what settings are you the happiest, or eager, or most comfortable? I'm pretty malleable when it comes to happiness. Like, I'm equally happy filming videos and editing as I am happy when we have time together watching stuff on TV. I'm happy when we're together in the house, but you're in your room, reading and studying. Mm -hmm. um, in another room, doing something else. Like, it's totally fine. There's no tension or no expectation. You know what I mean? And that's where I find, I, find, I find happiness in what comfort I have. Be it with you or doing something. I don't really get eager. Like, I get, I get excited when you have, when your days off are coming. Because I do genuinely like spending time with you. But um, other than that, I really don't get eager about anything, really. What about you? What settings are you happiest, eager, most comfortable? One in which there isn't too much commotion. Yeah. One in one that allow, uh, like you, we're very much alike. Mm -hmm. One in which I could be comfortable in would be something like that, that there is a stillness that allows me to relax. Also, like you, things that... I wouldn't have to quickly 
anticipate anything unexpected. Right. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons we work so well together is we're just, we're both kind of low-key. Oh, and dim lighting. That's yes, very important. Yes, this lighting is very bright for us. So, uh, it might seem too bright. We have everything on the lowest settings. So, <laughs> if, we're, if we're blown out, I'll try and fix it in post. Even though it would be a quiet stillness, that doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be quiet. That there cannot be any sound at all. Mm -hmm. There could be music playing, or we actually could be in an intimate surrounding with other people somewhere in the background. What things do you look forward to each day in your life? That's a question that I don't really think about very often. Uh oh. Well, look forward to in my life, yes, but to each day, well, that is a good question. Mm -hmm. Usually I don't have time to think about what to look forward to, especially considering that my day is usually pre-planned. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but something that I look forward to each day, that I can eventually go to bed and the day will end. That was going to be my answer, actually. <laughs> but for different reasons, like I can go to sleep and I can be in not conscious pain for a little while. So yeah, same answer. Yay, high five. As for in my life, uh, what I'm looking forward to is our future mm -hmm. together. Living somewhere by ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. In beautiful surroundings. I agree completely. And living comfortably. That would also be nice. Well, both physically and also financially. Mm. Yeah. I agree with all that. That's probably a, what I look forward to in life. That's probably much more interesting than what do I look forward to each day. Yeah, because they're long-term goals instead of immediacy. So, yeah. If you had three wishes that would come true, what would they be? <laughs> I <laughs> will see the first one coming. Number one. Go ahead. Tell me. What is mine? That you would not be in chronic pain, that it would go away. That I would heal. Yes. Number two. If I, had, if I had wishes, I would just ask to have enough money in the bank that I could live off the interest, <laughs> and then we could just live anywhere we wanted and travel and not be stuck where we are. Um, it's better than the places we've been, so no immediate complaints, but at the same time, it's neither one of our ours our like, ideal situation. Like, this isn't our ideal living situation. Last wish... Because, like, so many wishes can be solved by money. And that's that's unfortunate, but that's just the way the way the world works. Like, you know, I, I wish that you could be a teacher. Wish I could make that happen for you. And if I could snap my fingers and do it, absolutely. But, you know, if we had the money for you to go get your master's, then there you go. It was important, but the biggest for me is just getting rid of losing this. Because once this is gone, it opens up so many doors and avenues. From work to personal stuff. So, yeah. I have one wish. <laughs> Just get rid of this, really. Everything else could fall into place after that. So what about you? If you had three wishes that could come true, what would they be? Well, first, I would check to see if wishing for more wishes would be allowed. Smart. And if not, well, I would already be prepared for that. My first wish... Uh, we actually did talk about this some time ago. That it would be that I would give my wish to you. Oh, yeah, that's right. That you would be healed. Thank you. My second wish, well, that I would have a more fulfilling role in society. Mm -hmm. That there is a difference between a job and a career. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would definitely want to have a career. Mm -hmm. Since it would be much more life fulfilling. Yeah, I'd want that for you as well. And third, I'd like to see the world with you. Yeah. That we would travel... Yeah. Everywhere together. Yeah, see, so yeah, I agree. It'd be fun to to travel the world. Our wishes are also pretty kind of in sync there. So, <laughs> yeah. I would also... Those would be, for example, wishes that would be within the realm of possibility. Well, that these wishes are very likely to happen someday. Another wish that I would wish for, of course, would be eternal youth and beauty for both of us. If I, well, if, if I'm going to wish outside the realm of logic or reason, I want to be a vampire. That's actually a very good wish because you get those things plus more. Yeah. You'd have to give up being vegan, though. 
I would find a way. What other things would you want to change now and why? Besides everything that we've talked about, such yeah, as... Yeah, yeah. I, I, other, than, other than what we've talked about, is there anything else you'd want to change now and why? Because this is, this is kind of a repeat for us. Hmm, that does seem to be pretty much everything. Yeah, uh, it kind of does. Uh, you, uh, where we live, what we would be doing in life. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. If healing you wouldn't include this, it would also be this. Mm-hmm. Allergies. <laughs> Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would love to have a cat. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking of. I would. I grew up with pet cats, and I'd like to have cats. Me too, but they can put me in the hospital. So. All right, we're gonna divide this into two parts because we're obviously having a conversation, and I don't want to be like a super long video in one. So, end of part one will be question number ten, which you will ask me. What major regret do you have so far in your life? Is it too late to change it? Man, I live with a mountain of regret. I guess I regret getting into the car April 2nd, 2009. When I usually don't, I usually just stay home while my ex run, ran the errands. I regret September 9th, 2000, when I first met him. It's one of the things like you wish you could see the future. Like, had I known I was going to waste my youth, you know, 13 years of my life on someone who would ultimately leave me because of something that I can't help, then yeah, no. Drive for your ass back to Louisiana. <laughs> and don't ever let me see you again. Don't talk to me ever again. That's just me being dramatic, though. No, I would actually, I would I would not get into the car in April of 2009. Because my life would be vastly different. If I could not do that, but still meet you, like best of both worlds, then I, that's what I would do. Is it totally to change it? Yeah. <laughs> I almost, you know, recording a lot of years, you know. What about you? What major regret do you have so far in your life? Is it too late to change it? I didn't think too much far ahead into the future mm -hmm. because when you want something, it takes much more planning, time and money than one may at first think. You're talking about your schooling? Yes. Yeah. Because, well, if you aren't very careful, things will catch up to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel bad for you sometimes because you deserve better than where you're at. You're better than where you were. Oh, yes. But you still deserve better. Like, when you have, like, cuts or scrapes or you're putting Band-Aids on from what you do at work, it just bums me out because I'm like, this is this is beneath you. Your intellect and your ability is so much more than this. And you know that, too. But, you know, the, the cards are what they are. You know, we live in a country that rules us with debt. And when you're in debt and you can't get out of it and you can't finish your dreams, we both are victims of it. I try to live life without regrets, and the only regret that I have, that I can think of, is that for my university years, I should have paid more attention to... The end goal? Not so much the end goal, but the means to it. Mm -hmm. I may have gone through that thinking that things will take care of themselves, and well, nah. things don't always do that. No, they do not. I would also say, other than this, a regret I have is that I didn't... Um, become a filmmaker because that was, that was my dream since I was five years old was to make movies I wanted to be a director like it was my one single goal and I even went to film school like you circumstances happened and I couldn't finish so yeah uh, so we're going to divide this into two parts this ends part one thank you very much for watching we will return to you in part two so until then we'll see you in the next video goodbye goodbye